Well, today I have out the Savage 4 Tenors. These are a couple of chamber adapters that I picked up at a flea market a few years back. You probably saw them in a previous video of flea market finds. I think it was, uh, it was before COVID, obviously. So it's a couple of years back now, maybe even three. Uh, I figured being that ammunition has suddenly become scarce like everything else, sometimes it's easier to find a smaller caliber, like a smaller gauge rather for shot shells, like say 410, than it is to find 12 gauge. Uh, so I have been told. I have enough of my own that I'm not out looking for any during all of this ammunition panic, but uh, it's nice to have a little versatility when this kind of thing starts going on, and chamber adapters give you that. They work in break open guns. They're made for double and single barrels, I guess if you had a three barrel working that too. Not for pump guns and semi-autos, stuff like that. Um, all they do is they slide into your chamber and into the barrel. And essentially, they're like a little shot, shot, shotgun barrel. For 410, it just reduces the size of your chamber and barrel to be able to use the little 410s from the 12 gauges right there. You see the difference in size, but sometimes that's enough. If you're out after small game or you're just shooting tin cans or something or you just want to shoot one of your old guns with a lower pressure load, these are ideal. And they work pretty well. And now these ones, the four tenors, Savage made these, I believe, in the 60s and 70s, maybe the 50s too, I'm not really sure. Uh, they turn up at flea markets a lot. You'll find them on eBay, lots of them on eBay. There's always at least one or two on there. I'm not going to say they're cheap. They usually start at around 100 bucks and bump up from there to 150, 175. I've seen people recently paying some fairly steep prices for them, but I've also seen them go under 100. It depends. You get one without a box, just the tube. Maybe it's missing the O-ring, which is replaceable. Then uh, you can get them a lot cheaper. What you do have to remember is they are gauge specific. If you have a 12 gauge shotgun, you need the adapter for 12 gauge shotguns. Not the ones for 16 or the one for 20, which also exist. Savage also made, they made three of them. It was a 12 gauge, 16 and 20 to convert to 410. And uh, I find I, I like to use these mostly in the older guns. Now what I have here is the double barrel model 1889 Remington and the single-shot break-open Model 1893 Remington. Both 12-gauge. And uh, both were made in the era of black powder. You know, this one was... That's the Model 1893. was made somewhere between 1893 and 1900. This is the Model 1889. It was actually made in 1893. So, they're, they're black powders, definitely. They're both steel barrels. There's no uh, Damascus twist here, anything like that, but... They weren't made for the pressures of modern loads. They just weren't. And they also weren't made for modern shot shells that don't have roll crimps. They were made for paper shells, like this one, with a roll crimp on it, which is slightly smaller. The shell length is slightly smaller because of that than one with a regular crimp, a star crimp on it. Something to remember when you're dealing with old chambers. This doesn't matter on guns made after a certain point. I don't remember the 20s, 30s, whatever. When you're dealing with 19th century, it's best to keep it to very low smokeless, very low pressure smokeless, or a chamber adapter with a little 410 in it, or black powder shot shells. That's the safest way. It would really suck to ruin a nice gun like this by blowing it up with a modern magnum shell or something like that. Probably wouldn't, but it might. Especially in the case of the 1893 over there, which is already borderline uh, wall hanger because it's getting a little loose and sloppy. It's got a small ring in the barrel up towards the muzzle. Somebody at some point in time fired it with an obstruction. Not enough to burst it, just enough to ring it. So you don't want to really push it too much. I have found that with the uh, 410 and 410 shot shells, it's, it's perfectly safe. You know, it, you barely even feel it when you fire it. <laughs> Just shooting things like tin cans and boxes for the fun of it, just to say I did. That's all. I'm not like I'm going to use these as working guns. A little bug crawl on my arm there. And uh, the 1889, though, is, is a very tight gun. It's an exceptional condition, especially considering it is such an early one. It, you know, they made these for quite a number, I think, to 1908, was it, when they stopped making them? This is 1893, so it's far from the oldest one. I mean, the newest one, rather. And it is very tight, has nice bores, there's no rings in the barrel, everything is good, the locking works, it's all good. 
So I really wouldn't want to screw it up. And sometimes I just don't feel like cleaning up after black powder, you know. So what I do is I'll use the four tenor. Pop off a few rounds just for the fun of it, for old time's sake. And uh, we're good to go. Now how these work, as I said before, they slide into the chamber. You see it's got an O-ring there. That O-ring is available. It's the same one. You get one of those big O-ring selections like they sell for automotive use, and you will find one that'll work. It just keeps this from rattling around in the bore and it helps it seal up. When it slides in, you'll feel resistance when this goes into the barrel from that O-ring. You just oil it up a little bit or even grease it, and it'll go, it'll go right in there. It has an extractor, so if you have auto, auto extractors on your gun, that'll still work. Right there, you just got to remember when you slide this in a chamber to make sure this extractor is lined up with the extractor that's originally on the gun. And it's made out of aluminum. Same as uh, lots of things are that work, just fine. And it'll take a three-inch shell. Let's see, here's the box. The Savage 410 it was called. New featherweight, only weighs about five ounces. There is no alteration to the gun. Fits all standard single and double barrel shotguns. Easily inserted and removed in seconds without tools. Not so easy one-handed as you'll see in a minute when I try to put it in. But uh, this, actually, I have two. I, when I bought them, the gentleman that had them had two because he was using them in a double barrel shotgun. And I have double barrel shotguns, quite a few. And that, uh, you know, they, they work well that way. I can do both barrels. But if you only do a single shot shotgun, you'll find them on eBay a lot, just one at a time. You know, or you can buy two and just use one, I guess, whatever. It uh, tends to bring new life to a lot of old guns. I know there's a lot of debate out there about... Is Damascus twist steel barrels, are they safe? That's laminated steel. Are they safe? All of this. They were state-of-the-art in their era, which was the 8th, you know, the 8th and 19th century, early 20th century sometimes. Considered very high-end. You know, the barrels on these were considered the lowest grade. It's just plain steel. Blah. Not, not interesting. Just plain steel. None of the wavy lines or anything like that. Today, this is what we look for. Everybody wants plain steel because they're going to shoot them and they don't want to risk Damascus barrels. But uh, back then, Damascus twist ruled. What can happen with them that gets everybody worried? One, they're made for low-pressure black powder shells. That's what they were using in the era when they were new. It's what they were designed for. They were not designed for high-pressure smokeless powder, even you know lower-pressure smokeless powder loads. What can happen is internal corrosion can form between the layers of steel that can form weak spots that you're not going to be able to see in the barrel. And at the right time and place, the right load or whatever, that weak spot can burst. It can happen. I mean, it's not fantasy or anything like that. Some people will say, ah, oh, don't worry about that. It'll be perfectly fine. It'll last 100 years. Hey, yeah, maybe. It might last 200 years or it might burst tomorrow. It's like any other kind of gambling. You don't really know. You know, so what I like to do, because I do have a lot of Damascus twist guns, is I, I just put a 410 in there. A nice low pressure number 8 load like this one is. And I just use it for tin cans and boxes. I'm not, you know, the, the 120 year old shotguns, 140 year old shotguns and whatnot. These are not my working guns. I have modern guns aplenty. But these are the, uh, you know, when I'm feeling a little nostalgic and I want to have some fun with the, the old stuff. These are, after all. The guns that really won the American West, right here. You know, this is this is what the average settler of the 1880s and 90s carried west when they went out. They didn't have fancy, you know, lever actions and peacemakers like gunslingers had, like Wyatt Earp or whatever. They had these, and sometimes uh, just Belgian copies of these. They didn't even have actual Remingtons or anything like that. They had uh, cheaper shotguns than these, and uh, so you know, a little nostalgia. I want to go out and play with them. And, I, I hate having wall hangers. I really do. You know, I like to be able to say I, I've shot everything I own at least once. Okay, they're not seeing a range every day, but every now and then. These ones I don't worry about too much because, like I said, they are steel barrels. That does give them a little bit more inherent strength. But I still shoot them either with a low-pressure black powder shot shell or with the 4 tenor, just because, you know, sometimes I don't feel like cleaning up after black powder. So, like I said, I, I, I will use this. And just a little cheap box of 410s and... Bang away a little bit, clean it, put it away, and call it good for a while. You know, if you own a gun like this, you know what they, what they cost. And I just hate to have one and never use it. 
But on the other hand, I don't want to risk it either. I don't want anything happening to it. Look at this, the ants on there. It's finding the triggers of my, you trying to fire my shotgun, Mr. Ant? Yeah. I uh, don't want to risk the gun. I don't want to risk anything happening to it. It's a piece of history, must be preserved. Well, let's see, demonstrating with the, uh, the single shot. I'm gonna have to put the camera down for a minute to slide this in. I cannot do this one-handed. It is just not possible for me to do that. I don't have that kind of coordination. You break it open, and I'll show you, I'll try to show you here. Get this lined up. Okay. Let's see. Whoops. Not good. I didn't line it up. I'm telling you to line it up. I don't. That's the extractor I'm talking about. It's got to be lined up with the extractor on the gun. Just like you see there. That's good enough. That way the extractor for the gun, that belongs on the gun, it works with it and it'll extract your shell. And then, that's it. You now, your 12 gauge is now a 410. This one being a side cocker, you would simply just cock it on the side, and, you know, click right down and you're good to go. You fire it and eject the round. And uh, you can see how the extractor works there. You can, if I could focus on it. And out pops your shell, pop in the next one and you're ready to go. Cheap shooting. And I have to get this out now and to do this, <laughs> One hand, there we go. It's easy that way when I use both hands. Because I don't want to drop anything. That would be bad. You know, I use these in my, my uh, Crescent guns. That's the H&D Folsom Company, the, the, the Knickerbockers, the New York Gun Company guns. You know, those ones. You've seen video I did quite a while back on those. So, a lot of years ago. I probably have 10 different double barrel shotguns from the 19th century that I still shoot and I would use something like this with it. Before I had this I had a cheaper chamber adapter, it was just a small little thing like that. And I don't know what I did with it, but I do have these, I like these better. They actually have a little bit more of a barrel to them, so it stabilizes your shot a little bit better. And you could use them on modern guns too, on modern break open guns, not, not you know, pump guns, nothing like that. Uh, nothing wrong with a 1950s uh, Stevens or Savage or whatever, 1970s break open. You got a, a New England partner or something like that. Uh, it'll work on that. Any kind of break open gun. As, you know, as long as you get the gauge, the uh, gauge specific chamber adapter. And, and it's not the only chamber adapter I, you know, have for, I have them from other things too. I have one for my Martini Henry. I remember I do have a 45 Colt adapter for that one. So instead of uh, manufacturing my own 577 450 Martini or buying them, which I don't, I can shoot a Black Powder 45 Colt. Much cheaper. Sometimes I don't even bother with uh, conical bullets in that one. I just thumb press a round ball down into the straight wall case. Real easy to do. Old Turner Kirkland of uh, Dixie Gunworks taught me that one in his tutorial in the back of uh, the Dixie Gunworks catalog. Real simple, with a, black powder sh with a black powder shell, straight wall cartridge. You fill up the uh, shell, just about to the top. You thumb press the round ball down, and off you go. Well, after you prime it first, of course. And you're good to go. It's a cheap way to manufacture obsolete ammunition. You don't need any fancy tools, nothing. You're good to go. You can do it right there. Literally right there as you're shooting. It's just like, re you know, loading a muzzle loader. You're just loading a case, that's all. And, uh... That allows me to shoot my martini very cheaply, and eventually, if I ever finish any of those Nepalese dug out of a cesspool somewhere, you know, what do they call those, Gehendras or something like that, I have some of those waiting my attention. And uh, I think maybe that would be a safe alternative to shoot one of those, is with that same chamber adapter, which I probably will explore one day when I get around to that project. But at least for the shotguns, it's pretty easy. You know, there's nothing to it. Just a four tenner. Go check eBay. You'll find them there. But like I said, don't expect them to be a giveaway prices. But at least they're around. They're available. Oh, I should point out, you can get modern-made chamber adapters. You don't have to go back to the 1950s and 60s to get a four tenner. You can buy new chamber adapters. I don't know the availability right now with all of these shortages we're going through because of the uh, COVID pandemic. But you... Uh, 
usually can find modern made adapters. Basically the same thing, not a whole lot different. You know, some of them have longer barrels on them. Some of them allow you to convert your break open shotgun to some type of uh, rifle cartridge or whatever. You know, who knows? There's all different kinds out there. And you can even get custom made ones, you know, for all kinds. You want to turn your 12 gauge into a 4570? I would uh, not recommend doing that with something this old, no. Do that with a more modern one, something a little more up to date, so it has stronger barrel steels. And uh, that's, that's pretty much it. Just want to give you a look at that, the four tonner.